product is me. You know, this, this, is, this is what I'm all about. All about great food, great drinks, bringing them together, having a lot of fun. Andy believes his product has the potential to revolutionize the competitive snack market. We're going to put ourselves out there as the premium offer, the premium snack, and everyone else will follow. Hello, Dragons. I'm Andy Murray, the founder of The Drinks Bakery, and I'm here today to ask for £50,000 in exchange for 15% equity in my company. Over the last 20 years, we've seen the emergence of many great craft drinks. Imagine a perfectly baked Parmesan toasted pine nut and basil biscuit with a glass of champagne. We at The Drinks Bakery create delicious savoury biscuits that are expertly flavour profiled, so they actually complement great drinks. And we're already selling our range into some of the best beer bars, wine bars, delis and bottle shops, where we're establishing a premium snack brand that partners with the very best drinks brands. After almost two years of trials and development, we recently launched and we sold our first 5,000 packs of drinks biscuits in just a little over 10 weeks. We're talking to one of the biggest duty-free retailers in the world, who are especially interested in our drinks biscuits for gin and whiskey that we're currently developing and we're already planning our first export sales to China later this year. We're on a mission to export far and wide to a discerning global food and drinks audience, resulting in a year three target turnover of 2.4 million pounds. Thank you for listening, and remember that every great drink deserves a great snack from the drinks bakery. Would you like to try? Why not? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A business that marries up biscuits and beverages is the proposition from Andy Murray. I would certainly recommend the champagne with the, the green box. He wants a £50,000 investment for 15% of his company. And once you've had a little taste, I'll be very happy to take any questions you have. I'm sorry, I'm busy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Deborah Meaden is already a fan. Hi, Andy. Hello, Deborah. I really like them. What's nice, it's not just the taste, it's the feel in the mouth. Yeah, it's a biscuit. That, yeah, it's <laughs> really biscuit. important. Yeah. That, funny enough, that's your crispiest one. Yes. I quite like the slightly softer one when you're drinking. Yeah. You know, that's just a personal taste. So, are you a chef? Yeah. I, How yeah. did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> I, listen, I, you know, this stuff's in my DNA, you know. I grew up in a food-obsessed family. And, uh, you know, mum and dad were, were foodies, you know, before it was even cool, you know, back in the 70s and 80s. And um, so it's not unusual for me to find myself, you know, making my own uh, snacks. So you did, you did the recipe? You actually did yeah, the product development? Yes, they're yours? completely, yes. They're great. Thank you. Andy, I do drink in pubs. I do like craft beer. I'm not really a champagne drinker, but occasionally I do if I get invited around to Tuka's house. But I actually think the product's nice. I think it tastes nice. So I kind of get it. But I'm slightly concerned about the stage of where you are. It's a complete and utter startup. How much money have you put into it so far? Um, yeah, I put in about 17,500. Yeah. So it's been in development for a couple of years now. So I've been very thorough in terms of the research. You've done uh, well to invest 17K. <laughs> Is all that money gone? No, we have a little bit in the bank at the moment. I'm impressed too yeah. with £17,000 to, to have a product that tastes great, packaged with the design and on shelf. That's amazing. People Absolutely. spend that on trademark sometimes when they come in here. Yeah, thank you. High praise for the entrepreneur who's managed to build a company without splashing too much cash. Now, from business to biscuits, as Tuka Suleiman prepares to deliver a review of the nibbles. Andy, uh, Tuka. Hi, sir. I must say, I've just tasted two of them. My first impression is there's nothing new in the taste. Okay. Very predictable. And the taste in my mouth is, that's me. However, what I'd like to know is what does that cost? And what do you sell it for? Okay, yeah, so we, uh, that costs 58p. 58p. And we, and we wholesale it at £1.15p. Wholesale it. And what about to a distributor? To a distributor, 90p. 90p, OK. Sells for 250 So that sells for 195 in the off-trade, £2.50 in a bar. Right. 
What's the potential of getting this into a, an Asda, a Tesco? Mm -hmm. Do you think there's demand for it? What we've done is we've, we're already developing products that are going to be suitable for that the retail yeah. and the multiples. You're, you're and, saying and, we? Who's and, in the team? OK, uh, me and my biscuits. <laughs> you and your biscuits? <laughs> yes. So, so, right, so we mean is you? Yes. Andy? In a pub or an on-trade uh, location, this is usually at the back behind the counter, right? Yes. This is what we're going to change, OK? To this point, snacks have always been seen as a passive sale. With a snack like this, the outlet can actually be proud of a product that they've got and they say, oh, by the way, you like that IPA you've got, you really need to try it with, you know, these drinks biscuits that have been profiled to match. Right, now that makes total sense. Thank you. Hi, Andy. Jenny. Hello, Jenny. I think there's something here about the story that needs to wrap around this, because mm -hmm. it is a great story. What you said about your parents and growing up as a foodie and then creating this on your own kitchen table and the pairing with the wines. Yeah. It was just to see this in a farm shop and wouldn't necessarily make that connection. Yeah. So I like that whole concept. I think there's a lot to do around it and it's very early days. It's finding that, you know, holy grail. I'm pushing at doors. Yeah. If they're opening, I'm going through them. Well, I think you're opening the doors yourself <laughs> very, very well. It's just you've got to hone in on which is the door that's going to create the revolution. Yes. Do you have a view of that? What would be the game changer? It's, it's about nailing down the distributors at the moment. And also, all the while, be maybe looking at that um, retailing in the multiple, you know, getting the product right for them, getting the price points right in that sector as well. OK. Mm -hmm. I really like it. And I suspect you're not going to lead a lot of management. You want contacts? and opening the doors, and I think that's probably all you're going to need. Yep. So I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money. And I want 25% of the business. Deborah Meaden thinks she's spotted a hassle-free investment and makes a play for the company. Does Tej Lalvani also want a bite of the biscuit business? Andy, you've done a really good job on the flavours and the tastings. But I think I can do a lot in terms of retail distribution for you. And I think the supermarkets will be quite interested because they sell a huge amount of alcohol in terms of international, I can definitely help you there. We sell in about 100 countries with distributors in supermarkets. So, I too am going to make you an offer. For £50,000, for 25%, but I could be willing to share that. OK. Thank you, Tim. Tej Lalvani wants in and he's willing to partner up with another dragon to seal the deal. Will Tuka Suleiman be willing to join forces or make a rival bid of his own? Andy, you've got two offers. And I can see 100% why. I'm not sure about the product for my own taste, but I can understand where it fits. I can understand how commercial it is. So don't take it personally. I'm not going to invest in my mouth. And it's a great product, you're really good, you're pushing on doors, can soon sort out which door to push through and yeah. go for growth. This is definitely, definitely going to go somewhere. It's just a little bit early for me, not quite the right sure. fit just yet. So, I'm going to wish you all the best and say cheers, I'm out. Jenny Campbell shuns the snack business, leaving only one dragon still to stake his claim. Is Peter Jones planning on making it a hat trick of offers? Andy, it's weird because it kind of feels almost too new and too early stage, and yet there's lots of things that I like. To get it to this stage for £17,000, 
really shows that you know how to look after money. And I do think that you've got an opportunity to get this product out there. I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money. And I too would be willing to accept 25%. But I'd also be willing to share with another dragon. Thank you, Pia. Thank you. And Andy, I'll just add something. I would be willing to share an investment. So I've just made your life even more difficult. Thank you, Dameron. <laughs> you want to think about it? Yes. <laughs> it's neck and neck as Deborah Meaden, Tej Lalvani, and Peter Jones all compete for 25% of the business. But at 10% more than the 15% Andy wanted to give away, has he got the wherewithal to muster up a better deal? Um, would you be willing to consider a, a clawback of 5%, maybe once I pay back the money that I'm that you've invested? I'm definitely your man with this. I can help you build the brand, get the distribution, get the shelf space, and help you with the international, try and make it into a major brand. I'm gonna have to stick with the, what it is. Okay. Peter and Deborah. Yeah, in what time scale? 18 months. Yeah. Feels reasonable. Yes. Yeah. Well, then I'd like to accept your offer. Praise. Excellent. Good luck. Excellent. I am going to put on so much weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to I'm just going to drink with you and research. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well done. Thank Good luck, Andy. You've got two good dragons. And he's done it. He held his nerve, and it certainly paid off as he walks away with two formidable dragons. I was trembling inside, but I had that number in my mind and uh, took a deep breath, asked them, and they, they very thankfully agreed. So, uh, yeah, really delighted. Sorry, Tej, you weren't the jam between the sandwich well, then. I'm sorry, it's a great product, great entrepreneur, but wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> Next into the den, a pair of entrepreneurs who believe they've managed to combine two unlikely bedfellows, alcohol and well-being. I think we've got a, a very interesting product. We're playing in a, in a global marketplace with a global product that puts the health agenda at the centre of the proposition. The juxtaposition of four packs and six packs has certainly intrigued the dragons. I'm wondering what the um, what the connection is. What the connection is, absolutely. Yeah, alcohol with working out. It looks like a picture of my lockdown. <laughs> Let's do this. You got beat. Keep it positive. But despite their optimism, as a former military man, one of the duo is under no illusions about what could lie in wait. One of the things you get taught early on in the army is that no plan survives the first contact. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we think we're well prepared, the lift doors will open, uh, but when the bullets start flying, we'll see. Ready. Hello dragons, calories are energy and our super fit PT has just burned about 15 calories. Yeah, that's all, 15 calories for all that energy. Most craft beers are around about 150 calories. Think how much energy it takes to burn that off. Hmm. Britain loves beer, but our drinking habits are changing and the trend for healthier drinking is huge. I'm Charlie Craig. And I'm Jason Clark. We're the co-founders of Genius Brewing. In 2018, we launched Genius Craft Lager with a mission to make healthier drinking a pleasure, not a compromise. We're now looking for £120,000 worth of investment for 4% equity to grow our business and to make Genius the UK's number one light craft lager brand. 
Brewed with the finest Pilsner malts and three hop varieties, Genius is 3% ABV and 79 calories per can. That's less than an apple. Our distinctive gold cans contain exactly one unit of alcohol and feature industry-leading calorie, health and nutrition information. We're now in our third year of trading and we're looking for a dragon to join our team of A-list investors to help us grow our potential to what it really can be. Cheers. Thanks very much, Denton. So please do, if you'd like, open the, cold the, beer, the beer nearest to you. <laughs> Hopefully that's the coldest one. Low calorie craft lager is the offering from Charlie Craig and Jason Clark, who are seeking £120,000 worth of investment in return for a 4% share in their business. Hoppy just comes on with a kind of second or third mouthful. Supplement Supremo Tej Lalvani is first to get a round of questions in. Clever idea, and the product is good. Um, I like the taste of it. What's your background? I'm from brewing. I was very lucky to get into the, uh, the craft brewing world back in 2003. And actually, it was that experience which kind of got me thinking, particularly the conversations with the publicans, who were loving the craft beer, to absolutely transform their business. But one of the key problems that they were facing was, as beer gets stronger, people buy less of it. So, you know, you, know, you were going 6% beers, people are buying, you know, one pint of beer. So who's running the business? We both run it. Yeah. I look after the operational side, that's my background. Jason, and I look, I'm the marketing. creative director, so I look after the brand, the marketing, our CSR, our communications. Mm. Right. And so what is the, the split of equity at the moment? Um, our shareholders uh, yeah. hold 17% of the business uh, to date, and uh, Jason and I hold the, the rest, 83%. So have you, have you launched the product as yet? Yes, we're yes, in our third absolutely. year of trading. Yeah. yeah. Right. What sort of areas is it? Supermarkets and stuff? We're, we're not in the big multiples yet. And so what are your sales? Uh, to date, £50,000. £50,000. Yep. Charlie and Jason boast solid credentials, but have mustered only modest sales. And when placed alongside a £3 million valuation, news of their turnover has raised eyebrows rather than glasses. Guys, can, can I just explore the financials so far? What's on the promise that underpins quite such a racy valuation? It's, our business is a lumpy business uh, in terms of growth. If we would pick up one of the main multiples that could easily be 500 to 1,000 stores in that, in that first run. Suddenly, your numbers just absolutely leap. Yes, but, you know, any entrepreneur can stand in here and say the numbers can get racy. What underpins valuations is some evidence. I guess that's what I'm looking for. Not look, it would be amazing oh, if yeah. we no, get no, into all yeah. the supermarkets. Yeah. We'll sell yeah. loads. I think obviously. actually, uh, this year actually has been quite a turning point from us. And slightly, I suppose, came out of the left field when we landed the Spa. We're selling 165 cases of beer a month into them. Can I give you maybe a context on that? So, uh, in Scotland at the moment, the biggest selling craft brand is uh, Punk IPA, and they average about eight uh, bottles per week per store. We're already at three and a half cans of Genius per store on average. So within three months to do half of what the iconic craft brand's doing, Spa are very pleased with. Charlie and Jason suggest their convenience store sales prove they have a product with the potential for rapid growth. But Tuka Suleiman is more interested in the smooth-talking duo's funding to date. You're both great salesmen. Thank you, Tuka. I think that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> You've raised money successfully. Yeah. So how much have you raised in total? Uh, we've raised in total 330,000. So you've given away 17% of the business for 330,000. That is not a valuation of 3 million. Could you do the math, Charlie? Uh, 330, was it? No, I know what I they think, say. I, think, I just I think like to hear... More. It must be more than that, Charlie, because, no, I think it's, four, it's, it's over 400. Right, okay. Guys, can so, you pull I this out come, the bag, I'm, please? I'm, I'm, this is really time, important. Yeah. How yeah. much money have you raised so far? Simple question. Um, it's 500... We've raised, in total, £510,000. And how much have you got left of that? Uh, 24671 Plus 17000 worth of trade debtors. You've come in with a three million valuation on a fifty thousand turnover. You're probably losing one hundred and twenty-five grand, one hundred and fifty grand a year. Actually, yeah, a bit worse than that. Actually, yeah, one hundred and sixty. Worse than that. Okay, so basically, if you're in my position, how does that sound? Great. 
you know, um, I agree with everything you're saying, but this is our pivot year now. The things we've got right is five years ago, we saw the vision that healthy lifestyles were coming to the alcohol space. And so this, okay, is, well, I so agree this, with is, all that. this is paying Let off Let me now. give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. What will your turnover be in the next 12 months? 550,000 is what we conservatively put on our turnover. For Ten next... times more turnover? Yeah. There are 2,600 spas up and down the country. Now, we're at 100 at the moment, and we, quite conservatively, over the next nine months to a year, anticipate getting to just 600 of them. You guys are great salesmen, but lousy accountants. So, so what I'm saying to you is that the whole numbers and the whole story doesn't stack up. So I'm out. Jason and Charlie might talk the talk, but Tuka Suleiman has walked the walk away from the deal. Serial investor Deborah Meaden has listened to plenty of financial forecasts, but now she has a prediction of her own. So, here's my crystal ball for you. You need to raise a big chunk of money. And I have to say, getting into spa is great, but it's not the magic bullet. You are going to have to easily spend another half a million pound in branding. Um, at that point, if I invested today, my percentage would be so heavily diluted that I would really not be terribly interested. So um, I'm afraid I'm out. Two dragons down for Charlie and Jason, as Mystic Meaden offers a sobering glimpse into their potential future. She may be the queen of crafting rather than craft lagers, but Sarah Davies still knows the ingredients needed to brew up a hugely successful business. The big thing that worries me is just, you know, if you walk through the door and said, six months we've been going, we've got a bit of traction online, and because of COVID, we haven't got a chance to get this in front of any of the buyers. But I just feel like you've had all that and they haven't bitten. Buyers are innately conservative. They're also, in, in the beer space particularly, you can't overemphasize the dominance of the big brands. They own shelf space, which is why the strategy for our business is to partner with one of the big guys, because that's how you get to shelf space and that's where the volumes go. So are any of the big guys interested in what you're doing? Well, can I say that one of our new investors has just retired as the chief executive of Molson Coors. And Molson Coors globally, he gets it. You've just mentioned something really quite critical. You've just taken an investment from somebody that was the CEO of Molson Coors. What did they earn in the last five or six years of being in that organization? Sure Let's just say for argument's stuff. sake, right? We know it's millions. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay? Yeah. And how much did they invest in the company? They put 2%, so they, they put 60,000 into Star Wars. They've put 60,000. Yeah. The cost of probably four hours in their private jet. What does that tell you? That they have been cautious early on. That doesn't tell me that they think this is a great business. Because if they did, they would say to you, I'll fund this business for as long as it takes because I believe in you and I'm in for the long haul. That is a major, major problem. And for that reason, sadly, I'm out. Guys, for me, honestly, it just... It's too high risk, low reward, not, not an exciting investment proposition, really. So it's not one for me today. I'm out. Four dragons have now called time on Charlie and Jason's pitch. The duo's hopes for their healthier fermented hops now rest solely with Tej Lalvani. Right, look, sir. You've got a unique product, which is, which is half the way there. I like the idea, I, like, I, I would like to invest, but if I offer you 120K for 30% of the business, what are you gonna say? Yeah, we wouldn't be able to say that, to you. We, we have latitude from our investors to, to give some discount, but not obviously to that level. Exactly, so it just prevents me from investing because you're, you're valuing it at three million pounds on the basis that these accounts are opening up, Tesco, Sainsbury's or whatever it is. And as a dragon, I'm coming in to open those doors for you. And when I've done that, only then it's worth the three million pounds that I've invested in today. 
So, sadly, on that basis, I'm going to have to say, unfortunately, I'm out. Okay, thanks very much. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The craft lager entrepreneurs leave the den feeling decidedly flat. The calorie count in Charlie and Jason's product may have been low, but the price tag they'd attached to their business was anything but. In the wider picture of the industry, it's a really credible valuation if the opportunities fall in line. It wasn't easy, and we'll take you know, a lot of learning away from that, but uh, oh, it's time for a beer. Next into the den, a husband and wife team, Kate and Graham Daracott. It's going to be fun. Cheers. Who are hoping their booze business will be an intoxicating proposition for the investors. I think the Dragons will see the opportunity in our business. Our numbers are really solid and the product's such a fun product. Oh, it's coming down. Everybody loves a little tipple. Micro bar box. Hey, it looks like my kind of investment, I tell you. This is a massive opportunity for the dragons, and I think they'll just rush towards us with their wallets out. <laughs> remember to breathe and remember to smile. Not like Willis and Gromit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, dragons. I'm Kate, and this is my husband, Graham. Hello. I'm really excited to tell you about our company, Microbarbox Limited, which spreads joy across the UK with its gift boxes full of cocktails, spirits and mixers. Since our launch in 2015, we've sold over 50,000 boxes, and this year we're due to have a turnover of over £1.1 million. We're here today to ask for £90,000 in return for a 7.5% stake in our rapidly growing business. It's been a really fun journey getting to where we are, and with your help, we'd love to get to the next tier. Now, if you'd like, delve into your samples. You've got boxes and you've also got drinks. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> a range of alcoholic gift boxes is the offering from Guildford-based entrepreneurs Kate and Graham Daracott. Cheers, dragons. Cheers. 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 They're seeking a £90,000 cash injection. Oh, that's quite nice in return for a 7.5% slice, or should that be ice and a slice, of their company. Tuka Suleiman is first to question the drinks duo. Kate and Graham. Hello. Hello. I've got, I've got back on the alcohol. What? I can't comment on that. Tuka, you're not into alcohol. You have a drink every single time I go out with you. <laughs> for medicinal purposes. Anyway, moving on. So, I'm a consumer. And I come onto your website and I see a box. What does that box cost? Well, you see a range of boxes. OK. Yeah, so they're from 16 95 for the little mini one. And um, the ones that you've got range from £29 to £50. Pounds. All right, so the £50 you've sold... Yeah. Um, what turnover has that generated? We've done £1.9 million. Pounds. And what was your last 12 months? We're, we're two months away from the end of our so, so financial year. So, so what do you think you're going to turn over? Uh, 1.16 million. And the net profit? 170,000. That's not bad. Mm. So the £50 box, if I had to buy all those units outside of, of you, what would it cost me? So the £50 box is seven gin heaven. It's got seven miniature gins and yeah. five mixers. So, if you were to buy seven miniature gins from Sainsbury's and yeah, five yeah, mixers, yeah. that would cost you 20. 25 quid. So, you're charging double to what somebody could buy. Well, they've got, they've, it's currently, they've got a Sainsbury's bag full of miniatures and cans. No, no, I know. I mean, and a very unhappy what birthday what, what, what get, <laughs> Sorry, Kate, what I'm trying to get to is the consumer has become very savvy and they will look at your box and realise that you're overcharging them. I don't think we are overcharging them no, at all. But if you're telling actually. me that you can get the same bundle... A bag, Sainsbury's bag full of bits, yeah. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. I think it does matter. I think Sainsbury's it matters a lot, bag, actually. You know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the bag, it's the drink in the bottle that counts. No. 
And the packaging. And the packaging. And, and the, and the gift theory. card okay. message. OK, I look, look, I've made my point. Fair enough. The entrepreneurs fiercely defend the pricing of their product as Tuka Suleiman questions the value in their alcoholic goodie boxes. Deborah Meaden now wants to find out why the pair's business has suddenly seen a stratospheric surge in sales. So what have you done to switch this business on? Because you've got, what, 700,000 spread across one, two, three, four, four years. So this year, you've had a massive jump in sales mm. to 1.1 million. Yeah. So what did you do that caused this to happen? Um, COVID, obviously. Suddenly, everybody started staying in and sending gift boxes around to people to have a quarantini. So there's no doubt the pandemic has been a huge shot in the arm, but you could say that for e-commerce in general. We're also, um, a year and a half ago, we moved into a proper unit, a proper warehouse. And that was uh, one trigger for that. We've now got to this, the point that we've outgrown that. So it's been step by step by step, and it's all been organically grown by ourselves. OK, and in terms of the boxes, what's the hero product? Um, in terms of the bestseller, it's the Pink Gin gift set. Now, Sarah's got a, a bigger version. You've got the Pink Gin Heaven. I have the Pink, pink Gin, gin Heaven. Because, and I quote, as you're the youngest dragon, <laughs> we thought you'd appreciate the growing trend amongst our younger recipients. <laughs> just in case you need well, to you just put that back in that box and shut the lid. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you're that young, maybe you shouldn't be receiving it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, Kate, Graham. What's your forecast for next year's sales? So 1.1 this year, approximately. I reckon we can double next year. And so let's go for 2.2. So where do you guys uh, need help? I mean, personally, I think your branding could change a little bit. It looks a little bit dated to me, a bit 80s this style. Uh, but where do you think the value add could be? Well, I don't know the path to get to 10 million, 20 million, and so far. All of you, We'll know how to get to 10, 20, 30 a lot quicker than I do. And so hopefully you can put some sort of roadmap in. A roadmap to riches and a master plan to make many more millions. Tej Lalvani discovers the entrepreneur's expectations of a dragon are dramatic. And now it appears Sara Davies is wondering if the couple's concept is copyable. Guys, I think it's really cute. I think Thank you've you. done a great job, but there's not really any barriers to entry. You know, I could go away from this today and think, that was a canny little business. I'll put a few <laughs> bottles in some boxes and... Absolutely. And, and I think that's, that's what's worrying me. Yes, yeah, so obviously the, the obvious thing of having to have an alcohol licence and a premises licence, but, yep, loads of people have got those. Yes, you could go away and copy if you wanted to. And you would, by the time that hit market, be where we were today. But we'd like to think that we will have moved on because we're constantly evolving the products. And the box is a box full of you know, drinks, but it's what those drinks are um, yeah. and, and who's searching for them. And, and knowing what the next trends are. Is it Prosecco? You know, is it, is it yeah. rum? OK. My take overall on it is I think you've got a, a cracking little business but I just don't feel like there's anything unique enough. I just don't feel like it's an investment proposition today. So I'm really sorry, guys. I'm out. Thank you Thank very you much, anyway. Shane. Sarah Davies calls time on her interest in the alcoholic enterprise and becomes the first dragon out. Will well-known wine lover Peter Jones take a shot at the beverage business? I've been in this game. I used to own a company which was like a Wines Direct and Wines for Business. And what we found as we scaled, as we grew, interestingly, just stayed at a plateau level from an alcohol perspective. And then we were very much targeted then by some bigger companies, and they just started to take the charge. And then they started to outbid. And we started to draw away then from and retreat from online and then went down the corporate marketplace. So I think Sarah is spot on. 
There's so I am many Peter. Pe people. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people that will easily replicate what you do. And if I owned even 20, 25 percent of this business, at 90 or 100 thousand, I personally can tell you from experience, I don't think I'd get that money back for many, many years. And I think that you will make several hundreds of thousands a year for yourselves. But for an investor, I'm kind of in too long. So for that reason, I'm going to say I'm out. But still congratulating you for what you've done. <laughs> Irony. Thank you, but thank you very much, thank Peter. You. So, guys, you're going to end up getting to a good level. A good level. But I don't actually see it going boom. Because with the gifting market, people tend to spot it, do it, and then it's done. I'm now looking for the newest and the greatest. So it's just not an investment for me. So I'm sorry, I'm out. Look, I think you've got something interesting and you are making profit, you're doing well, you're growing. I just fail to see where the value I could add to this. Yes, it'll be nice to be a part of it, and but... If I can just say, it's that um, advice uh, and that direction and the shortcuts and uh, pointing out the pitfalls as you go along, and I guess that's really what we're looking for. But you, you've had that kickstart. The, the pandemic has helped you accelerate your business significantly, but unfortunately, I just don't see the need of having an investor, so for that reason, I'm going to say, good luck, but I'm out. Three more dragons depart, and the drinks proposition is on the rocks. And then there was one. Tuka Suleiman is the entrepreneur's only hope for investment. He's cutting down on alcohol, but will he cut them a deal? You have got a good business. And perhaps it's a question of consolidating what you've got and growing on that. Because as you get successful, you want to run. We were hoping um, that you guys would help us run. <laughs> no, but, but I, think, I think the problem I would say to you is that if I got involved, I'd want too big, too big a stake. I'd want at least 20%. But I wouldn't want to insult you with, with an offer that I know would be refused. Right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right? So to be respectful to you, to say it's your business, and, it, and I think it should remain your business, mm -hmm. I'm not going to invest it, I'm out. OK, but well, thank you very much thank indeed, Tika. Thank you all very much. You've got some new customers anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Tuka Suleiman refuses to raise a glass to the drink proposition, and Kate and Graham exit the den without a deal. Oh, not the result we were looking for. It felt like it was going quite well, and then... Um, for them to tell us that we knew what we were doing and we didn't need them, well, I politely disagree. <laughs> <laughs> People get sent away, they don't get investment, but we get left with lovely samples and gifts. <laughs> yes. And we get to take these home, and not a lot of people know that. Cheers to that, Peter. <laughs> Luckily, we've got a ton of booze at home, we're going to go and drown our sorrows. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let's see what the next pitch is like.